Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas, and we're two Swedes, and we love design. We are. And today we're going to show you some more uh, design objects uh, seen in our home. Yeah. yeah. And we're going to start with one of my absolute favorite pieces. It's a Kalju on the Air fabric mm. called Monster. And you get why it's called Monster, huh? <laughs> yeah. It was designed in 1986 for Tiegruppen, a company founded in 1970 by 10 Swedish textile artists. And they produced colorful and conspicuous patterns that differed a lot from their mm -hmm. competitors. Yeah. Inspired by some small plastic monsters, Kalju one <laughs> bought for his daughter. He uh, he made this, mm -hmm. and it was printed by Borås Väveri for over 15 years, and thereby commercially one of his most successful textiles. Yes. And I love it. Look how fun it is. <laughs> yeah. And if you don't know anything about, um, I mean, many foreigners uh, don't know many uh, much about Kalju van der but no. check him out, because... Yeah. He's a great Swedish uh, artist. He really is. Um, and I got in cont contact with him for the first time when I listened to uh, an old Swedish uh, 1970s uh, band called uh, Gunder Hegg and oh, okay. uh, Blå Tåget. <laughs> he oh. was a member of this. He's, oh, okay. He played a trombone in the, in the band. But nice. Uh, he's a great artist. He so is. I, I really Very love fun. Him. I like fun things. Yeah. And the next thing I'm going to talk about is miniature chairs, and I really love miniature chairs. You love I, those. I make a lot of miniature chairs mm, myself. You do. But these are two chairs, and they are very similar. But I love them because they are made by two different companies. One from where I'm from, uh, originally in Sweden. Yeah, and the other one is from uh, close to where I'm from. Mm -hmm. Um, and this one is by Edsbyverken, who started producing furniture already in 1899. And this one is from Nesjö Stolfabrik, who started producing furniture in 1870. So they are the two earliest Swedish uh, furniture manufacturers. Yeah. And Nesjö Stolfabrik was closed in 1992, but Edsbyverken still exists and yeah. they still produce furniture. And Don't, uh, no, not like not, these not like the, stoolar, no, but... No, uh, like more office yeah. furniture. But these are exam example of pin stolar yeah. then, and that's a kind of double... Wooden dowel. Yeah, wooden dowel chair, carver chair, or it's a kind of Swedish Windsor chair, yeah. I would say. Mm. And the model was actually inspired by American chairs, and then the model was brought back to Sweden by... Uh, emigrants who mm. returned to Sweden after yeah. a while and uh, they started producing this kind of, of shares in Sweden in the mid 19th yeah. century already very uh, popular yeah and this one is this one is a bit newer this one is older and it's it's stamped with the original Edsbyverken logotype so <laughs> i think this is the 1960s mm -hmm, i think okay. this one is like 1990s or something yeah. is the new uh, Nesjö logotype here <laughs> now they're cute. They are cute. Next up is uh, Gustavsberg's uh, Spisarib. Mm -hmm. These ones, not particularly a favorite of mine, no. but they, they are good looking. Yeah, and they, they are, are a classic. Yeah. Uh, they were designed in 1955 for Gustavsberg, yeah. and it was in production until 1974. In more recent years, Gustavsberg's Porcelinsfabrik bought the rights and started producing some of the old classic Gustavsberg's patterns, among them Spisarib. Yeah. Officially, it was designed by Stig Lindberg, who was the artistic mm -hmm. leader at Gustavsberg, but according to the artist Karin Björkvist, it was actually she who designed it. When working in the ceramic studios, she showed her sketch of Spisarib to her boss, Stig Lindberg, <laughs> and he liked it, but he said that he had already designed an almost identical pattern, but had it at home. <laughs> yeah. so I, I will show you tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then he brought the sketch yeah. undated. And, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's a classic, and it it's very much like Scandinavian 1950s. Mm. Yeah. And now I want to show you a, a tray. A tray. A tray. 
And it's this one. It's dusty. It's dusty. Yeah, I haven't really. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's it's a teak tray. Yeah. Uh, made from molded plywood covered with uh, teak. And it's made by Svenska Möbelfabrikerna in Budafors. And it's made in 1964. And this is perhaps a bit interesting because if you own something by Svenska Möbelfabrikerna, it's often a piece of furniture, of course. Mm -hmm. Then they might be stamped like this uh, if they're made in the mid, uh, mid uh, century. Yeah. And then they're all, always dated. And the date seen here is uh, the year they were manufactured. It's not uh, necessarily, of course, the year they were designed sold. Mm -hmm. uh, or so, sold. Oh, oh. No, but it's uh, the year they were manufactured. Yeah. And this one was made by uh, Bertil Fridhagen. And Fridhagen was the chief designer at Svenska Möbelfabrikerna. And he created a huge lot of different furniture series. And, I mean, he's really underestimated, I would say, mm. today. Uh, a piece of furniture by Fridhagen is cheap in Sweden and it's not appreciated as much as they should be, no, I think. No. Um, and this one, I mean, it's interesting also because Svenska Möbelfabrikerna was a pioneer in Sweden when it came to molded plywood. Mm. Uh, and they were inspired by the Imses in the US. And just like the Imses, Svenska Möbelfabrikerna also worked with the Swedish military. Yeah. The Imses worked with the American military, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. But And and uh, Svenska Möbelfabrikerna produced a Swedish fighter jet <laughs> for the uh, Swedish Air Force called uh, J-22. J um, so uh, that's uh, quite cool that they could produce a, a complete <laughs> yeah, fighter yet from the same material as this <laughs> tray. But I, I like it and it's a useful thing, I think. Yeah, it's yeah? beautiful. That's why it's dusty. Yeah. <laughs> Next up is this small little lamp. <laughs> and sadly, we don't really know who designed it, but it's often claimed to be designed by the Danish designer Sven Age Holm Sörensen for ASEA, but we haven't been able to verify no, that, no. so it's unclear, but it's super cute and it's useful in so many different ways and, yeah. and so many times we use this if you, if you just want to small yeah like a small spotlight yeah, and yeah. it's very minimalistic it it's is. just this cone and then uh, you can put it on the wall too yeah love it and it's yellow i love yellow <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a beautiful little lamp it is yeah and then another thing actually made by stig lindberg <laughs> and that's the carnival uh, vase carnival vase <laughs> carnival vase <laughs> Uh, it looks like this, it has uh, two sides here. And it was designed for Gustavsberg and uh, was in serial production between 1958 and 1962. And there were in total uh, 32 different pieces in this Carnival series, mm. um, including a large cylindrical lamp. It's, it's very cool, it's yeah, a it table is. lamp. Yeah. yeah. And Stig Lindberg was also uh, illustrating, uh, illustrator illustrating children's books. And one can understand that when looking at, <laughs> at yeah, this. Yeah, it looks very much like books uh, called uh, about a, a guy called Krakel Spektakel in Sweden. We know who he is. Yeah, but, <laughs> we do. Yeah, but I do like uh, Carnival. Uh, many things by Stig Lindberg is perhaps a bit... I mean, they are not really funny, but this is a funny That's piece fun. of, uh, yeah, of, of design. So I really like this one. <laughs> yeah. Next one is a bit random, maybe, <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, but I love it. And it's it's this Tweety Bird. <laughs> yeah. Isn't she? She, she, she's so cute. Yeah. Uh, the character Tweety was created in 1941 by Warner Brothers for the short film series Looney Tunes. You've yeah. all seen that. Yeah. And also Merry Melodies. She's made from fiberglass filled with plaster <laughs> and she was probably made to be used as a stored display yeah. for the figures. I think so. But she's so cute and she's also yellow and... I love her. Yeah, that's a, a funny piece of yeah. uh, design. She's big. Yeah, she's like big. And... She's big. Oh, she knocked me. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. But that's a funny piece of yeah, design. I love her. I love yeah. Her. <laughs> and you had a large thing. I will show you a small thing. Very here. small. <laughs> it's, it's this one. It's actually... It's very dusty. It's very... Yeah, it's... 
<laughs> Wait a minute. It's just embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's this one. <laughs> it's the super egg. <laughs> super egg. <laughs> yeah. And in 1959, the Danish designer and mathematician Piet Hein decided to use the shape of the Lame curve when designing the roundabout uh, at the Stockholm city square Sergels Torg. Yeah. And it's sometimes wrongfully claimed that uh, Hein designed the actual, actual uh, super elliptical curve, but that was uh, designed, I mean, in the 19th century. And uh, yeah. of course, but he named it the super ellipse. And um, most famous is, of course, the super elliptical table he designed uh, together with uh, Bruno Matson. But there were a lot of other super things done by Piet Hein. And one thing is this super egg. And super. A, yeah, and the super egg is, uh, if you see it from the side, it's like the oval. same. Yeah, it's the same shape as the table, but super this is uh, three yeah. dimensional. And this small one from brass. It's made from brass, and it can be used as a small sculpture. We have this on this uh, rosewood uh, yeah. uh, base, but it can also be used like in a drink. You have it. In, you store it in it's like an ice cube. Yeah, you store oh. it in in the in the fridge, and then oh. you take it out no, in the freezer. The, in the freezer, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 and then you take it out and put it in the cool. whiskey or something. <laughs> uh, but it can also be used as a stress egg. I, as if you're stressed, and so mm. you can have touch you it. can just touch it okay. and uh, have you done that? Have it, no, I haven't. But it's uh, feel. Are you stressed? Hmm. No, I'm not very stressed for the moment. But kind of cute. Yeah, it's a funny little piece of design. <laughs> Next up is the. Giraffe by Lisa Larsson. <laughs> I like animals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it was designed as a part of the series uh, Stora Zoo, Large Zoo, hmm. and was produced uh, between 1958 and 1977. Uh, Lisa Larsson started producing animal figurines in 1956 when the series Lilla Zoo, <laughs> Small Zoo, was launched. Uh, first out was a small cat. Uh, and this one was the first of the large zoo pieces. Yeah. And it is large. Yeah, it's large. Yeah. Uh, Lisa Larsson is today best known for her many animals and also voluptuous women. Yeah. And we like those too, but I just love the animals. Yeah, and th this graph is, it's very, uh, it really looks like uh, a graph. Uh, of course it does. Yeah. <laughs> it has the long neck and stuff. Yeah. And I love it and it's cute. Yeah, it's a beautiful Yeah. One. I'm going to hold it. Yeah. And last out today, we have, it's it's two of my uh, small cups I have bought. <laughs> they are uh, two small souvenir cups uh, produced for exhibitions. Yeah. And I love this kind of souvenirs uh, produced for old exhibitions because they are not supposed to be very exclusive things. They should be cheap and they were sold like for a small sum of money mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. some ex exhibitions. And this was, this is a chocolate cup made for the Baltiska Utställningen in um, Baltic, exhibition. Baltic Exhibition in Malmö in 1914. 1914. Yeah, and the Baltic Exhibition, it was exhibition with all the countries around the Baltic Sea. Yeah. And at the time it wasn't very much many countries because Russia was uh, uh, Finland and uh, oh. the um, uh, Baltic countries, they were also part of uh, Russia. Oh, okay. So it was just Sweden uh, and... Um, Denmark and uh, Germany and Russia. Denmark so it's four is countries. Not around the Baltic yeah, it was uh, considered to be a oh, part. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I think this is cute, and it's it's, it's marked Ögonkaka. It's uh, actually a, um, a brand of uh, cocoa, cocoa uh, made in Sweden. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, even older. <laughs> it's made for the Konst och industriutställningen. It's an art and industrial exhibition also in uh, Malmö. Yeah. And, and it was made in 1896. Oh. And it's also a small cup perhaps made for coffee, I think. But I think they are interesting historically. And I, yeah. I like the shape of them. And this one is made by Gustavsberg. And this one is made by Rörstrand. The so two it, uh, largest uh, um, porcelain factories. In Sweden, yeah. yes. And this was some of our favorites and, uh, no. Not only our favorites. No, but some design things we found yeah. at home. Yeah. Small enough to show you while sitting here. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And if you like this episode, please click 
thumbs up and subscribe if yeah. you haven't already. And follow us on Instagram. We are called Scandinavian Design 101. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. Thank you.